This is Puerto Rico, an island in the Caribbean, a self-governing territory of the United States. Puerto Rico is one of the Antilles Islands. It lies 2,200 kilometers southeast of Miami, Florida, and 1,200 kilometers north of Caracas, Venezuela. It is a tropical paradise, a sort of jewel in America's crown, where visitors find an enchanting blend of sugar and spice, with small towns of proud, friendly people, and a salsa rhythm that has everyone dancing. Surrounding the island of Puerto Rico is a labyrinth of submerged coral reefs. These reefs, with their bounty of fish and other sea life, had long been a blessing for Puerto Rico's fishermen. But for ship captains navigating these shallow waters, Puerto Rico's reefs have long been a curse. One of these cursed blessings is the Margarita Reef. It lies off the southwest coast of Puerto Rico, near the town of La Paquera. The fishermen at La Paquera tell of a shipwreck on the Margarita Reef. None of the fishermen know the name of that wreck, and few know the story of its sinking. This mystery wreck could be a ship called the Alicante, the first propeller-driven steamship to sail the Caribbean. The expedition begins on the island of Culebra, off the northeast coast of Puerto Rico. Two officers with Puerto Rico's Department of Natural Resources guide the team to the dead reef of Culebra. As they sail through the winding channels of the marina to the harbor mouth, the officers explain why an otherwise colorful reef is wrapped in the gray shades of death. Between 1941 and 1975, member nations of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, had conducted naval gunnery training exercises off the coast of Culebra. NATO forces used the sandy beaches as an artillery range. They bombarded these beaches with thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition. They destroyed the ecological balance of these coastal waters. dives into a shadowy world of dead coral. They are diving in a place few divers have ever been. They descend to a graveyard beneath the sea, and they are about to see what very few eyes have ever seen. At the bottom is scarred of seagrass. Few, very few schools of fish, because there was so little food for them to feed on. This virtually lifeless reef holds a special, if grim, fascination. Shell casings litter the bottom. There may even be unexploded ordnance. There is so little color and so many shades of gray, a dim specter of life. Yet, in the upper reaches, where sunlight is brightest, the reef is slowly being reborn. Diving the Culebra Reef is a unique experience for the team. Tomorrow, they hope to experience something equally as unique, the unraveling of a mystery which could identify a significant archaeological discovery.
According to the La Paquera fishermen, the wreck lies in shallow water on the unprotected side of the Margarita Reef. They have just the right guide to take them where it is. His name is Ivan Lopez. He is a fisherman who is also an amateur archaeologist. Ivan insists on a detour to the dive site. The wetlands and mangrove provide sanctuary for migratory birds and native wildlife. The mangrove has a timelessness about it. Mangroves protect the reefs from a heavy buildup of land-based sediments. Too much sediment on the reef will kill the coral. That's why Ivan worries about real estate development and the reduction of mangroves. The fate of the mangrove is the fate of the reef. That line of breakers, 100 meters to port, marks the crest of the reef. With any luck, the mystery wreck will lie just this side of it. Suddenly, the reef rises beneath the dive motor. Ivan eases the boat over it. Striking coral is like striking rock. Ivan looks for a spot where the waves break a certain way into the reef. That's where it is, seven meters on the bottom, the mystery wreck. The turtle seems comfortable enough with these intruders on the reef and swims off in the never-ceasing hunt for food. reef is a biological nursery, a home for nearly 25% of the ocean species. Dazzling color, a variety of shapes, all so overwhelmingly beautiful. Coral reef abounds with life in many sizes and shapes, like this moray eel watching the divers from a crevice in the coral. This sea anemone The divers slowly search their way down the slope of the reef into deeper water. For three centuries, wooden and iron ships have grounded and broken apart on this reef. One of them was the first propeller-driven steamship to sail these waters. It was called the Alicante. Is this that ship? Is this the Alicante? Or is it any one of a dozen it's buried by the coral on the Margarita Reef? Portholes in this hull section had been removed by a torch. There was some talk among the La Paquera fishermen that a Japanese salvage ship had scavenged iron off the wreck. The missing portholes suggest these rumors may be true. The debris field for this wreck is spread over an area of 300 meters. That suggests a huge ship, one much larger than the Alicante had been. There is some evidence of a large ship wrecking on the Margarita Reef during the Spanish-American War. It was a freighter converted into a hospital ship. Could this wreck be that ship and not the Alicante? 
The size of the debris field points in that direction. However, it is possible that a strong sea had spread the wreckage and lengthened the debris field, giving the wreck the appearance of having been a much larger ship. Or perhaps salvers removed the portholes, disturbed the wreck site, and scattered the wreckage. This hull section suggests that the debris field has indeed been extended either by solvers or by the sea. The size and spacing of these iron ribs tell of a ship which could not have been more than 70 meters in length. The iron ribs also indicate that this ship was built sometime in the 1800s when iron ribs had replaced wooden ones. Archaeology is a lot like detective work, gathering clues into a body of supporting evidence until there is enough to draw a conclusion. Here's another clue. This is a donkey boiler which was used as an auxiliary boiler on a steamship for driving the winches, the windlass, and other onboard machinery. The donkey boiler confirms that this was a steam-driven ship. But if it was a steamship, then there's something missing from the wreck, the ship's engine. It should be here, in the midsection of the ship. It, too, must have been scavenged. The engine would have provided a valuable clue to the ship's identity and to the date when it was built. Here's more evidence of a steamship. It lays about 100 meters from the body of the wreck. This is the best clue yet for dating the wreck. It's built of iron, a lag boiler. That means it predates the 1860s when steel was used for steamship boilers. Nurse sharks are nocturnal creatures, and this one is unappreciative of the camera and the bright lights. How easily the sea and its creatures claim the wreck as their own. The ship probably sank 80 to 100 years ago. The Alicante was recorded as sinking in September 1881. The evidence is mounting for an iron-ribbed steamship, which was built sometime in the late 1840s and early 1850s, and sank sometime between 1870 and 1900. But that could point to any one of a dozen ships wrecked on the Margarita Reef. What the team needs to find is some characteristic which defines a particular type of ship. The shape and structure of the bow is often a defining characteristic. This one is a clipper bow. This wreck was a fully rigged steamship. So was the Alicante. But the most telling clue is at the end of this long drive shaft. It is a three-blade Archimedean screw propeller. The Alicante was fitted with just such a propeller. This is unique, rare. None have ever been found in the Caribbean until now. This is what shipwreck hunting is all about. This is a very early screw propeller, one of the first. And it's all here. The drive shaft running through this copper stern tube. That alone goes a long way to defining this ship. A copper stern tube is a diagnostic characteristic of early screw propeller steamships. So was this rudder. It has the shape and configuration of a rudder for a sailing ship, with this exception. It has an inset for the prop. It shows how shipbuilders were adapting sailing ship technology to accommodate steam-driven ships. Without a doubt, this is the Alicante. It was very much like this drawing. 
61 meters bowed astern. It was Scottish built, Spanish owned. A fully rigged steamship, propeller driven, one of the first of its kind. A shipwreck distinct and deserving to be an underwater archaeological preserve of Puerto Rico. Locating and identifying the Alicante is a proud moment for Puerto Rico's marine archaeologists. Documenting that discovery and helping tie together the loose ends of a mystery has made for an intriguing dive into an underwater paradise, submerged and treacherous, the Margarita Reef. <laughs> 